Bestbookbits.com brings you the book summary of The Next Millionaire Next Door, Enduring Strategies for Building Wealth by Sarah Stanley Feller and Thomas J. Stanley. You may not be familiar with Dr. Sarah Stanley Feller, but you've probably heard of her dad, Dr. Thomas J. Stanley. He was the author of one of the most widely read financial books in the world, The Millionaire Next Door, which was the best-selling personal finance book back 25 years ago. Sarah also knows a thing or two about the average millionaires as she surveyed over 4,000 of them. She's the president of Data Points, which helps advisors understand their client's money mindset and published a follow-up to her father's book titled The Next Millionaire Next Door. She read her dad's book while attending college, but had no idea the importance of his work and what was going to happen with the book. Who would have thought surveying a bunch of everyday people that turned into millionaires would become so popular? At that time, very few books had accomplished that kind of research on the affluent that Stanley performed. Not just the seemingly affluent, but those households who actually had a high net worth of $1 million or more. Some of the characteristics he found from these everyday millionaires included they lived well below their means. Financial independence is more important than displaying high social status. Most owned their own business. They spent less than they earned. This is the exact opposite of how most doctors or other high income earners live. Their main focus is trying to keep up with the Joneses, with luxury houses and expensive cars, leaving them with little to no savings. They're used to spending everything they earn and sometimes more. The worst part of falling into this trap is that it's hard one to get out of. Despite the evidence-based financial planning principles taught throughout The Millionaire Next Door, many people continue to ask, why am I not wealthy? Although it's been over 25 years since the book was originally published, have things changed that much? Are these principles for wealth accumulation that much different now? Unfortunately, in 2015, Dr. Stanley was killed by a drunk driver before completing research for a follow-up book. The good news is that Thomas Stanley's daughter, Sarah, continued to carry on his work to bring their findings together in their book, The Next Millionaire Next Door. Most of the book's data was from a survey conducted of affluent Americans between 2015 and 2016. Let's take a look at what they found. The Next Millionaire Next Door, the sequel, book summary. After the original book, The Millionaire Next Door, was published, there was some that stated the reason why everyday folk turned into millionaires was due to the booming economy along with a host of other excuses. One of the main reasons that Feller and her late father decided on a sequel was to see if there were lifestyle and behavior changes noted in today's millionaire households. Here's a few of their findings of what today's millionaire looks like. A portrait of today's American millionaires. Most were married men in their 60s that believed a spouse was critical in economic success. Median annual income was a quarter of a million dollars, and their median net worth was 3.5 million. Most didn't become wealthy until their late 40s or early 50s. Most didn't become wealthy until their late 40s or early 50s. Less than one third rely heavily on a financial planner. 70% say they know more about investing than most financial advisors. More than 60% have 30% of more invested in retirement accounts. Over 33% invest in real estate. More than 70% know their personal expenses. 59% are frugal. Most spend on jeans, $50. On sunglasses, $150. And on a watch, $300 tend to drive Toyotas, Hondas, or Fords at least three years old. Median price paid for a car was $35,000. And their path to wealth. Looking at Table 1, 2, Career Lifestyle Groups of Affluent Sample. So the path, which is above average earners, the median age is 57.4, and their median annual income was a quarter of a million dollars. Their average difference in actual versus expected income net worth was $1.3 million, and the sample job titles is things like IT director, engineer, director, manager, and professor. 
going down to high income earners with the median age of 58.2 with their median annual income of $400,000. And the average difference in actual versus expected net worth was $1.1 million. And the sample job titles, things like attorney, physician, vice president, head of a private equity firm, investment manager. And then down below, we've got small business owners and entrepreneurs with a median age is 59.8 with a median annual income of $400,000 with an average difference in actual versus the expected net worth of $2.5 million. Sample job titles such as accounting, engineering, IT, and real estate. Note, the median net worth for each group was $3.5 million. The larger the difference in actual versus expected net worth, the higher the likelihood of being a prodigious accumulator of wealth. No matter what path the person took to reach millionaire status, roughly 70% stated they're always being frugal. The majority of those reading this article fall into the high income earner group. These individuals often tempted to look the part of their colleagues by purchasing the doctor house, luxury automobiles, and other expensive consumer goods. To them, status symbols rule their life. To build wealth with a high income takes considerable discipline in the consumption arena. This is becoming increasingly harder as more than 70% of Americans are on social media and can be easily influenced by what others are doing or buying. To have economically self-sufficient children, this group must apply and teach frugality. Moonlighters, gig workers, and the FI community. One of the main differences between both books has to do with the rise of those that obtain side gigs in order to reach fire, financial independence, retire early. It's now much easier to have multiple sources of income than it was a decade ago. With technological resources at your fingertips, anyone can create multiple businesses in a matter of minutes. The discipline of wealth building. The number one success factor noted that determined wealth was discipline. In 2016, 91% of millionaires rated being disciplined as the most important success factor, being disciplined. Specifically, discipline is required to take income and transform it into wealth. Remember that income does not equal wealth. Income does not equal wealth. The discipline includes knowing, number one, how much you bring in, number two, how much you spend, and number three, creating a budget to ensure the difference is in the positive camp. More than nine out of ten of the top five income people in America reported that being well-disciplined was very important in explaining their socioeconomic success. This finding is consistent over time. From the millionaire mind, we're reminded that a disciplined person sets his sight on a lofty target, then figures out productive ways to reach it. Disciplined people aren't easily sidetracked. Discipline often requires going against the tide, including the tide of your social influences, and perhaps even how you were raised or long-held beliefs about what you're entitled to today. One man pretends to be rich, yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor, yet has great wealth. Proverbs 13.7 America, where millionaires are still self-made. One of the most surprising aspects of the millionaire next door was the finding that 80% of millionaires were self-made. The same trend rang true after surveying the affluent of the next millionaire next door. In Fellow's decades of surveying and studying millionaires, she has consistently found that 80 to 86% are self-made. That also applied to decamillionaires. Even though economic opportunities continue to be huge in the US, most Americans don't have much wealth. The main reason is they spend all or most of their income on liabilities or things that have little to no lasting value. They lack the discipline, there's that word again, required to accumulate wealth. Many American households are on a treadmill of working and consuming. Do the opposite. Our income, while statistically related to wealth, is not wealth. When we start to understand this, especially the high income earner, we start seeing the criticality of our savings rate. This rate is driven not by what we make, but instead by what we do, how we consume and save. It's up to us to save more than we spend and live below our means. This is a mathematical truth in building wealth and financial success. 
Once we understand that a lifestyle of consumption, one that's more interested in appearing wealthy, is driving most Americans into a lifetime of dependency, work, and little economic freedom, we can begin to create an alternative plan for our lives. It may look very different than our parents or grandparents, and unless you're lucky, it'll look very different than those around you or on your social media feed. Influences on wealth. As science has shown in almost all aspects of our lives, why we do what we do is a combination of our unique characteristics and how we were raised. Growing up, we can't choose where we came from, who our parents are, or what kind of early education we receive. But as adults living in a society that doesn't dictate our choices, we have the freedom to choose with whom and how we spend our time. These choices can influence our financial health and future. Those who are financially independent focus on their own choices, taking responsibility for their money-related actions and behaviors. Recent research shows that few other factors help shape how we save and spend money like our upbringing and our family's influence. Adult children who reported that their parents were frugal, discussed money-related matters, and demonstrated good money management skills were more likely to be prodigious accumulators of wealth compared to those who did not experience this same type of upbringing. A vast majority of young people learn about a family's propensity for saving and financial management through direct observation versus through conversations regarding these behaviors. In other words, parent behaviors tend to stick with children more so than discussions of what ought to be done related to money. So if you're a parent, then remember that your kids are watching you, and actions speak louder than words. The trouble with the status of doctors. Physicians and surgeons earn more than four times as much as the average American each year, $210,000 compared to $49,000. There are approximately 650,000 physicians and surgeons in the United States, and they're typically fallen into the stereotype of high-income earners who are challenged into building wealth. In Fogel's research at her company, Data Points, the majority of physicians fall into the 33rd percentile or below on the assessment regarding frugality and financial acumen, measure of knowledge and expertise in investing and financial management. Often physicians' median net worth is negative, due in most part to their student loans and age. But there's something else at play, the adherence to the stereotype of doctor status. In society, they're expected to play their part. Strengths for building wealth. The next millionaire next door created a helpful list to ensure households built wealth called Critical Tasks for Household Financial Management. In general, consider the outcomes of potential actions before deciding on a course of action. Make financial decisions based on the household's budget, plans, and long-term goals. Focus financial management efforts on becoming debt-free. Spending. Live, spend below means, income, slash net worth. Spend less on expenses than household's total income in a given time period. Budgeting. Create an emergency fund. Budget enough money for basic needs, i.e. food before budgeting for optional purchases, i.e. entertainment. And account for important household needs, i.e. food, clothing, shelter, in preparing budget. Analyze budget and financial goals when considering a significant life change, job changes, additional children, moving locations that may impact goals. Administrative tasks. Pay bills on time to ensure no late fees or interest charges apply. Complete and file tax returns on time, whether in-house or with assistance. Pay credit card bills on time to ensure no interest charges are incurred. Pay entire balance of credit card each month. Working with others. Discuss unplanned or unexpected purchases with spouse slash significant other prior to purchase. Work with spouse slash significant other as a team when managing household financial issues. Investing. Understand the nature of investments and their risk and return profile. Invest in employer-provided retirement accounts. Understand the appropriate level of risk to take for own investment portfolio. Occupying our minds 
and time. How we spend our time can either support our financial goals or detract from them. What activities occupy the time of millionaires? How do these activities compare for prodigious accumulators, PAWs, and under-accumulators of wealth, UAWs? Pause. Those who adapt at transforming their income into wealth spend considerably more time reading business articles and reading in general than their under-accumulating peers. But perhaps it's because our under-accumulating friends are working more than the poor's. In Fellow's research, they noted that UAWs are spending more time on social media sites, 14 hours, compared to poor's, 9 hours per week. Looking at Table 5.6, which is hours spent per month in selective activities for under-accumulators of wealth versus prodigious accumulators of wealth, 1996 versus 2016. You can see the activity of studying and planning for future investment decisions is way more for the poor versus the under-accumulators of wealth. And managing current investments, you can see again the prodigious accumulators of wealth outbet the time hours spent per month in managing current investment and then also exercising as you can see out of the park so habits of prodigious accumulators of wealth is studying and planning future investment decisions managing current investments and exercising looking at table 5.7 we can see the hours spent per month in selected activities for under accumulators of wealth versus pro Indigenous accumulators of wealth, looking again, reading trade journal articles about the same of 10 hours per week, reading business articles other than trade journals, as you can see the prodigious accumulators of wealth, better by 6 hours per month, and reading for pleasure, 22 hours versus 17, working in general, you can see the under accumulators of wealth work more than the prodigious accumulators of wealth on average per month in the hours. Also, as you can see, spending time on social media sites, non-work related, is not conducive to wealth accumulation. Also, shopping in stores, pretty much the same hours, playing games on mobile device, not too much there. Now, looking at the graph, table 5.8, hours spent per week in selected activities, millionaires versus the American population. Millionaires work more hours than the average American, 38 hours versus 32. They read more for pleasure, 5.5 versus 2 hours. And they're on social media, only 2.5 hours per week versus the average 14 hours per week. They exercise 5.0 hours per week versus 2.5. And caring for family, 8.5 versus 3.6. And playing less video games and sleeping a little less as well at 53 hours versus the average American sleeping 61.5 hours. Consider any number of technological distractions today, from social media to texting to gaming. How many hours a day do you spend on your devices? Distractions are a significant reason why many struggle to reach financial independence or achieve other goals. We know that the more we're able to focus without distractions, the better we're able to build true wealth long term. How much time do today's millionaires spend on so-called excitement of the day? Most reported only spending 2.5 hours per week on social media versus the average American who spends almost six times more, 14 hours per week. What about thinking about presidential outcomes? Most spend less than an hour thinking about political elections and about 10% spend no time at all. Looking at the table 5.10, Time spent thinking about selected topics by percentage of millionaires. Millionaires overall spend less time worrying about favorite candidate losses at state or local elections. They don't worry about favorite candidate losses at a national election, and they don't worry too much about their favorite sports team losing. Millionaires in a regular job. Similar to 1996, when The Millionaire Next Door was published. Today, it's possible, with an average to higher than average income. To become a millionaire though, steady, prudent, disciplined financial management and regular income, regular meaning not extraordinary commissions from sales jobs or extremely high salaries like those of doctors, attorneys and CEOs. This is good news for the high income earner. For most Americans, one's desire, discipline and intellect are more important factors in accumulating wealth than earning a high income. The problem today among many high-income earners is that they think that money, income, is the most easily renewable resource. 
What are the 20 of the key findings of this book? Number one, the same trends exist as before in 1996 when the first book was released. In other words, spending habits are a bigger indicator of wealth, as are behaviors more generally, rather than income. Number two, they found that even in poor societies, the same behaviors that are key to wealth, such as focus and discipline, are key. Number three, they deal with the survivorship biased issue. One of the critiques of the original book was that the only the cream of the crop was selected. In other words, it might be true that many of the world's millionaires are teachers, accountants, and other mid-income professionals, but surely they are just a few that have succeeded. Number four, most millionaires don't look or act rich. Number five, one reason why many high-income executives aren't always wealthy is peer pressure. In other words, if all your banking or legal colleagues are boasting about going to a luxury holiday over the weekend, you are more likely to be like them. In comparison, if you are a teacher, you are less likely to feel the same pressure. That doesn't mean that there aren't many wealthy, high-income people. It more explains why this isn't as prevalent as it should be. Number six, as a follow-up to point five, however, social media has started to change the dynamics. These days, even mid-income people are likely to feel the pressure to keep up with the Joneses due to Facebook and other social media. Number seven, only some people use income to create wealth. Wealth is certainly not an autonomic ticket to wealth, as countless sports and entertainment celebrities and lottery winners found out, judging by bankruptcy statistics. And number eight, many of the millionaire's next door types have good habits early on. For example, one of the millionaire's next doors that is featured in the book was taught by his frugal grandparents and parents to save 10% of what he makes. So even at college, he saved 70 cents from earning $7 an hour. He kept those habits up when he earned more later in life. Number nine, the small compounding effect of decisions adds up over time. For instance, investing 15% instead of 5% of your income sounds like nothing over 30 years. However, it can make a huge difference. Number 10, the vast majority of millionaires next door types don't live in fancy houses. Number 11, there is a new rich these days, which is different to 1996. The dig economy has created a subsector of people with two to three incomes. For example, they are the teacher plus occasional Uber driver. This demographic is increasing and surprising number are actually reaching a million dollars. Number 12, a million dollars in 1996 is worth about 1.5 million now. However, that doesn't change the statistics that much. There are more millionaires in the US and around the world, even adjusted for inflation, than 25 years ago. The wealthy need to focus on unearned income, eventually, and not just earned income. Number 14, the same basic skills and habits and behaviors that can lead to a million dollar portfolio aren't affected by the economy, technology, or elections long term. The fact that we had a financial crisis in 2008 and 2009, and yet more millionaire next door types have been created is a testimony to that. 15, 70% of millionaires in the survey said they have always been frugal, meaning they spend a small percentage of their income relative to most people. And number 16, small business owners alongside the mid-income salary earners are more likely to be the millionaire next door types. And 17, many of the sons and daughters of millionaire next doors didn't even know their parents were rich until they died. One person inherited $10 million but had no idea his dad was wealthy. Number 18, the biggest thing stopping people from becoming financial independent is external pressure from friends, family, and society to have big houses, cars, and fancy lifestyles. People who give into this external pressures become easy prey for marketers. 19. Thinking differently has always been a trait of millionaire next doors. That hasn't changed since 1996. Examples included in the book include people who decided to live in smaller towns and cities and live like a poor person in the eyes of many of their peers, rather than caring what the rest of society thinks about them. And last, number 20, people shouldn't be waiting on radical government to save them. Instead, should focus on their own behaviors. Now, that's a wrap on this book, The Next Millionaire's Next Door. Now, if you want the summary in PDF format, click the link below and I'll email this straight to you. 
Now, if you don't know who we are, we are Best Book Beats. We've done over 800 video book summaries on YouTube, so check us out there and subscribe to the channel. If you're into audio book summaries, check us out on Spotify. We've got over 800 audio book summaries uploaded. And if you're into the written word on bestbookbits.com, we've got over 800 written book summaries. Now, check out our cool products and services there as well at bestbookbits.com forward slash products. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you got something from this. Go out there and become the next millionaire next door. Take care. Bye-bye now.